Sure, Mary Max is, um, is a, well I suppose it's a film about friendship. It's a, it's a hard film to describe because people say, what's a synopsis? And I say, well, it's about two people who are pen friends. And that sounds really boring. Why would you go and see a film about two people who write letters to each other? It doesn't sound very dynamic. But it's, you know, it's a very um, emotionally complex film. It's, it's more than just friendship. It's about self-acceptance and acceptance of others. And it deals with some uh, subject matter that you wouldn't normally see in an animated film. So it's, it's definitely a film for adults. Although, you know, a lot of children have come along too and, and um, educational institutions are, are using the film as an educational device. So it has a very, I think, a very broad audience. But it's definitely not a, a Shrek or an Emo. It's a, it's a far more um, adult film, yeah. Um, um, because I'm a writer and director, uh, you know, a lot of writers write fiction. Well, I write um, based on real life. So, I mean, I do exaggerate and embellish and, and make up sections of the story, which I'm not, which have never happened. But uh, Max, for example, is based on my pen friend who lives in New York, and uh, he is um, uh, he does have Asperger's syndrome. He's Jewish. Uh, he's also an atheist. Uh, so I always start off with the character and then add to it. So, and yeah, all my films. Harvey Crumpet was an amalgamation of um, of about eight people. Um, my first film, Uncle, was back to my uncles and cousins, my cousin, bro brothers, my brother. Um, it's just you know, it's just easier for me to write based on on real life. Um, I'm not very good at just sitting at the computer inventing things out of thin air. I, you know, um, so look out, you could be next. Yeah, with, uh, well, I have a pen friend to start with, and, and that's quite unusual. Most people now have Facebook and email, and, uh, but I still write letters. We still correspond by snail mail. Yes, I think if it wasn't for pen friends, there'd be no stamps in the world. Uh, so we, um, we've been writing for about 20 years, and... Uh, we, of course, we could use the internet, but we choose to, to do it the old-fashioned way. I mean, who doesn't love receiving a letter in the mail that's handwritten? That's just something magical. He's seen the film, of course, but uh, we, we've, I've never made it to, to, to New York. So hopefully through the film, I'll get to, uh, I'll get to meet him. No, I don't, I don't know what he looks like from there down. I've, I've got a little passport photo of him, but I know he's a big man. I can tell he's, he, and he says, he tells me he's a big man. But he could be short, he could be tall, I don't know. Um. Oh, no, 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 life, life hasn't imitated art. Uh, no, he's, he's been very supportive and he's read the script and he knew, we've been very transparent with him right from day one and of course we, we got his permission and his blessing and uh, he, he, you know, I don't think he was, uh, I don't know, he's, he's been interested on and off, um, but it's been a long process, it's been five years, so I think he's as surprised as we are that it's now finished and people are going to see a film about him and... Uh, Well, there's, there's several reasons why I, I work in uh, stop motion. Um, we could have easily made Mary Max as a 3D computer animated film, a 2D animated film. We possibly could have made it as a live action film with real actors. But for me, it's just it's personal taste. I love, um, I love the tactile nature of stop motion. I mean, everything in our film you could hold in your hand. Every little object has been handmade by a team of over 120 people. And if we'd have made the film in front of a computer, you know, sitting down in front of a computer screen every day doing computer animation, I, I'd, I'd get very frustrated. I like to get my hands dirty. I like to, you know, smell paint and, and, and sawdust and have all these, uh, you know, tactile materials. And, uh, and the people who worked on the film are all the same. They, they you know, they come home with paint in their hair and, you know, covered in glue and, you know, it's just...
they're very hands-on sorts of people. Uh, and, you know, over the years everyone said that uh, stop-motion animation is a dying art form. Well, you know, we just, just saw Henry Selleck and uh, Coraline has, I think, just made over a hundred million dollars in America. So, it, you know, it, is, it isn't a dying art form. There's plenty of room for computer animation, stop-motion animation, 2D animation, and really, at the end of the day, it comes down to the story. It doesn't matter how you animate. As long as your story is strong, then, then you'll, you'll have a good form. Yeah. Uh, yes. Well, look, it's, um, we, you know, essentially there's we, what we call two, two worlds and two colour palettes. So there's Mary's world, which is sort of a, uh, a very brown world, and Max's world, which is very black and white, grey. And there's a couple of reasons for that. Mary's world is, is brown because in the 70s in Australia, when I was brought up, to me, from my memory, everything was brown. People had brown carpet, um, painted their houses mission brown. That was the colour of the times. Um, you know, it was for some reason Brown was in. Uh, and for Max's world, of course, New York is a very concrete sort of uh, uh, environment, and so it, it made sense to make that uh, a black, white, and grey world. Well, <clears throat> there's several reasons that the Twin Towers are still in, in the film. The first is because the film was set in, in the 70s and 80s. You know, they were still there. And secondly, uh, we have two investors who invested uh, some money uh, in the entire production, and they, to their two brothers called Tom and Paul Hardart, and they live in New York. And we, we asked them about, you know, how do New Yorkers feel about the Twin Towers? And they said, oh, well, if they were there at the time, then they should be there. Um, so we, we made a very conscious decision to leave them in, and. Uh, uh, not make them a big feature of the film, but you know they, they were a quite a they had quite a presence on the New York skyline, so you, you sort of can't leave them out. Uh, and we've had wonderful reactions from people in New York saying, "Yes, you kept them in. You didn't pretend they're not there. I mean, they were there. So, yeah, they're enormous things to build too. You know, they're as almost as tall as me, uh, all made out of wood. So the, the colours sort of match the characters' moods and uh, melancholy and, um, you know, loneliness. If we'd have made the film all colourful and vibrant, I don't think it would have matched the spirit of the film and the, and, and the mood. Uh, so, and they're both very desaturated worlds. They both have had the colour drained out of them. And that was also a device so that when we use spot colour, so Max's pom-pom, spot red, it really stands out and it actually emphasises um, the importance of these little objects that they send each other. But, um, but it's a very tricky film to process on film because um, uh, we spent a fortune trying to get the colour right and the colour grading accurate. And uh, unfortunately, you know, even last night there was a blue, slight blue tint. I mean, that's the nature of film. Films are very, you know, it's a chemical process. The film has to go through a, a chemical bath to get, you know, like the old way photographs got developed. When you get your photos back, you're never sure whether you're going to get the right, you know, contrast. And, and um, it, it's, it's getting better, though, because digital technology is taking over film. And, of course, within a few years, when you go to the cinema, you won't be seeing a film projected. You'll be seeing digital, a digital projection, which means that the colour grading will be as accurate as when you first did it. You won't have all these. It won't be, you know, unpredictable. Um, look, I, I, I've been to so many festivals over the years, and, and I have a, a, a cupboard full of trophies and awards and. It doesn't bring happiness, you know. Um, it's about making sure the audience really like the film, and, and uh, that for me is the most rewarding thing. I mean, awards, you know, they, they're nice, and they, they, but the thing is, awards really help you to get another film financed. So. Yeah, well, you know, at the moment, we, you become a slave to your film, and you just seem to have to 
follow it around the world wherever it screens at festivals and, and theatrically. Uh, here in France, uh, we're being released, I think, 200 cinemas uh, in September. So we'll be, you know, helping promote the film. There's a lot of marketing that you have to do, but probably towards the end of the year, I'll start to think about what am I going to do next and uh, start to start writing again. It all starts with words, so I've got to lock myself away for a year and, uh, or however long it takes. It usually takes about a year to write a feature script. And, and I need to find a character to, so, so it could be you, I need a character to, to, uh, uh, to, to be inspired from.